This right here is the Kelvin FS300, a $2,500 LED light, about two and a half times your standard 300 watt light. Is it worth it? Let's find out. I'm Woody Tirosh, this is DIY Photography, and this is one big fat case. This is good because a 300 watt light, reflector, ballast, and body is not a small fit. And while the EPS 300 does take some space, there is definitely a reward attached. Now, I'm going to talk about light quality in a bit, but first, let me take a few seconds to admire the many little things that are so awesome here. I mean, you can see that whoever designed this light has a love for the craft. Look at the ballast. You can either stand it on the floor or use this little retractable spigot to mount it to any super clamp. Done, it goes back. Or the thing they did was putting angle marks next to the yoke mount. If you need repeatability, this has you covered right there. And I love this hook for mounting your slack cable. I mean, it's not the sexiest light in the world. I would even say it's kind of square. But when I asked the Kelvin folks about it, they said it makes the light very easy to maintain and relieves some heat. So I guess I can handle the boxiness. I mean, Volvo is boxy, right? No one complains about that. Volvo. Boxy, but good. Are you crazy? Okay, back to the case. It's a rolling soft case with a sturdy handle, and once you open it, it's all bright yellow inside. Hello, ballast. This block weighs about three and a half kilos and is about 30 centimeters tall. It has presence. This is where the power comes from, but also where you control the light. It takes AC power in and send DC power to the main body. There is a DMX in, DMX out, and two USB ports that you can use to charge external equipment if you need. Actually, I'm curious to know, would you use your light to charge your phone? I know I would, but let me know in the comments. And these knobs in the back, these are the control dials, but we'll get to them later. You'll also get a 62 degrees reflector, a super clamp, a five meter power cable, and a five meter cable from the ballast to the light. Okay, we can stop here. After all, we're not here for the case, are we? We're here for what's inside, right? Hidden in the side below this yellow blanket is the light itself. Just before we dive in, if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing for more in-depth reviews. In the back, all you have is a power import and a vent for the fans, which by the way, we're super silent in our testing. Good job, Kelvin. We have another vent at the bottom as well, and in the front, there is a balance mount. And the main star of the show, a 300 RGB ACL, less of a mouthful, LED. What it means is that instead of just the standard red, green, and blue chips that come in an RGB light, you also have lime, umber, and cyan. Why is this important? Well, imagine if you're painting. If you only have two colors, you will be kind of limited, especially if they aren't that different from each other. Say, warm white and cold white? Well, that's your standard bicolor light which gives you a range of white temperatures. If you have RGB, then you now have three colors and you can mix them in quite many ways. But unlike what they teach you at school, mixing red, green, and blue does not create a good white. It creates a white, but with a very low CRI. And this is why they made RGB WW LEDs. You can use the RGB LEDs when you need color and use the white LEDs to just make good whites. But this light isn't RGB WW, this is an RGB ACL. Back to the painting analogy, if you have more colors in your palette, you have more control over the mix. Kelvin developed a six LED engine called Cantastoria to make sure that different LEDs are mixed correctly. In photography terms, it means that the EPOS 300 has a wider color gamut than most light, giving you more creative freedom and freedom it has. You can control the light via quite a few modes. You get your standard CCT, HSI, and RGB modes, but you also get gels menu where you can select both the light and the gel you put on it, either Rusk or Ali. And if you feel extremely fancy, there is also an XY menu. The only thing I'm missing here is a source match menu to select rear lights like sodium vapor or metal halide. It's still possible to mimic those lights. There is just no menu for it. And it feels like I don't need to say this but now, but yes, there is a Scient Magenta slider. There are quite a few effects built into the EPOS and each gives you a couple of extra options to adjust it. For example, the fire effect has a campfire option, but you can also go for a bonfire look or even mimic a candlelight. You can also adjust it further by selecting the wind level and intensity. 
and there's a similar approach towards the other effects. But having more colors doesn't necessarily mean you have better color accuracy. So is it accurate or not? We put it to the test. Here's the Epos at full brightness, 5600 Kelvin, one meter away from our Saconic C700. No reflector. It gives a rather accurate 97.5 plus CRI and a temperature reading of less than 60 Kelvins off a near-perfect daylight at 7500 lux. Nice. When you turn to color modes, you can definitely see how the extra LEDs affect color. You got a smooth spectrum versus averaging several spikes on an RGB WW light. Here is the spectral reading from the EPOS at 20% versus the CL60R and RGB WW light. Now that we have cleared color, let's talk brightness. After all, if you're buying a 300 watt light, you probably want it to be at least somewhat bright. Well, using the same one meter setup, we measured about 42,000 lux with a reflector and D9 diffuser, center beam. As you saw, if we take the reflector off, we get about 7,600 lux. It may seem like a big drop, which it is, but that's because now you cover a bigger area. The nice thing about the Epos is that it gets a really smooth fall off when the reflector is off. You can adjust the fall off not only via the reflector, but also by using a bunch of magnetic diffusers. Kelvin sells a couple of different diffusers and each of them affects the fall off a bit differently. The most interesting one is the dome diffuser, which extends the beam from 120 degrees to 180. We tested the D75, D90 and D100 diffusers and loved the D90 the most. Do note that using those diffusers will affect not only your brightness, but your colors as well. Lights with a more narrow beam, like the Orion 300, for example, are brighter center beam. We measured about 32,000 lux. But a narrow beam will have an insanely bright hotspot and a rapid fall off. If you go just a bit off center, you lose about a stop of light. In a head-to-head -head bulb comparison, the Orion is about two stops brighter center beam. But CRI is at 96 and the color temp is about 250 kelvins off. Speaking of the Orion 300, how does it actually compare to the Epos? It is also a Beastie RGB ACL 300 watt LED, although it is a bit older. And now after Aperture Bot Prolog, it will probably get discontinued. But still right now, this is the most comparable light we have. It's interesting to see how Prolog went with a built-in lens and a bright hotspot, while Kelvin went with replaceable lenses and a more even spread. You can always focus the light with a lens, but it would be hard to diffuse the Orion without losing some light. If you plan on using a softbox, then obviously you want the light to hit the entire front surface to get an even illumination. But to be honest, both lights are pretty awesome when it comes to color rendition. Being this close, weight also shifts to usability and control, so how do they fare? The Orion has a nice colored LCD display and you use some knobs and buttons to navigate it. You have quite a lot of options here, so it can get a little bit confusing, but you will still find what you need. In contrast, while you can still control the app as via control dials, you also just have to do this. Touch controls, how great! Together with the simple menus, it is really easy to navigate. You can use the touch screen to ballpark your settings, and if you need some more refined adjustments, you can still use the dials. You know, for when you need to change the hue by just 0-1 degrees. You have a main menu with all the modes, plus an extra button for settings. At any time via any menu, you can also just press the back button to go back to where you were before. Really simple stuff. If there is a setting you like, you can even save it as a named profile. Where were we? But what if onboard controls aren't your cup of tea? Well, then you have the option to control the EPAS via a wired DMX or a built-in Lumen radio chip. To those unaware, DMX is a universal language for controlling lights. You typically see a DMX controller on bigger sets where you have multiple lights from multiple companies or at concerts next to a lighting technician and a DMX console. Still, DMX is not that common, so let's instead focus on the remote control option that is more relevant, the app. The Kelvin Narrator app lets you control the light from afar using Bluetooth. If you have another Kelvin light lying around, you can do anything you'd expect from a lighting app in 2023, like grouping, shutting down an entire scene, and so on. The app lets you change brightness, temperature, modes, and basically anything you can do on the EPAS itself. Okay, enough about control. Let's talk power. How do you power this beast? Well, 
other than the obvious solution of just plugging the ballast into the wall. You got these. These are plates for V-mount batteries. But you can also get the EPAS with V-mount or Gold mount plates if this is what you prefer. Just remember, it's a 300 watt light. You'll need two 26 volts 12 amp batteries connected to run it. Or if you're using your old 14 volts batteries, you can still run it only at half the power. You mount them in the ballast like so, which in turn you can mount to a light stand with a spigot and a super clamp. In conclusion, the Kelvin Epis 300 is a great light. It's powerful, color accurate, and it offers plenty of choice while being really easy to use. That said, it's slightly bulkier than other similar lights and it will set you back $2,500. This is more than other lights, but if you need the accuracy and flexibility, this is probably the best in class. I guess it would be nice if the keyboard was in full screen mode when you're inputting the name for a custom profile. At this point, I'm really just nitpicking. It's an awesome light. So yeah, overall, the Kelvin Epis 300 gets my hearty recommendation, uh, if you can afford it. I'm Udi Kivosh with DIYphotography.net and I hope you enjoy this video. Hit the like button, the share button, the just, just hit all the buttons on the screen and I'll be seeing you in the next video.